Hello, brethren across the world. This is post to W branch, the CPM of the Strigate Commission, the Christ Faith Family Church. Uh, I want to tell you that the real day of rest in God as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm not talking of a religion or Christian denomination. I'm talking of if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, the real day that is accepted by God, that was ordained by God for his Sabbath rest, still remains unchanged. And that's the Sabbath day. That Sabbath day falls on Saturday. This is Christ Faith Television Service. Happy viewing. In the regular calendar of nations, it falls on Saturday. It didn't change. The Lord Jesus Christ always did keep the Sabbath. He kept the Sabbath till the end of his earthly ministry. And he delivered same to the disciples, the first straight gate church people. They kept the Sabbath. Now, the significance of the Sabbath day in a relationship with God can never in any way be overemphasized. The Sabbath day is the day of rest, specially ordained by God. For all that we believe in him, for all that will be kingdom people to be observing, there is no any other day. We should all remember that God worked for six solid days, creating all things, including mankind. Then he blessed all the creatures. Now he set aside the seventh day. If you read the Bible, it's written that God now specially blessed the seventh day. He specially stopped the seventh day with special anointing. Anointing for refreshment. Anointing for reset of power. Anointing that removes stress and the mark of days. The Bible says God blessed the seventh day and rested in it. And for our benefit, he said, we should rest on that seventh day so that we might become partakers of the special blessings of that day. There is no other day within the week that carries the same anointing as the seventh day. That's the Sabbath day. Every other day gives us to labor, to strive, to till in the ground, to sweat in. Especially under the influence of the Alpha Course in the Word of God. But the seventh day has been blessed especially by God. to carry the powerful anointing for peace, for healing, for refreshment, for renewal of life, for recovery, for everything that we will ever need to enjoy life peacefully on earth, the seventh day. And that's why particularly Satan, the arch enemy, is fighting against the seventh day, which is the Sabbath day of the Lord, which is Saturday. 
The Sabbath day is never Sunday. Sunday is the first day of the week. Come on, look at your calendars. The first day of the week, that's Sunday. And that was the day God, uh, Jesus Christ resurrected. Jesus Christ lied low on the Sabbath day so that he might actually observe the Sabbath rest as ordained by God. Now, the seventh day is very, very important. Unfortunately, people don't realize this, that the devil really knows the importance of the Sabbath day to our lives in our relationship with God, to our peace, to our successes, to the answering of our prayers, and for our names to be written in the book of life. Anyone that is not keeping and observing the Sabbath day rules will not have their names written in the book of life. That's the day of the Lord. It's a Lord of God that has never changed. So Satan has decided that no one on earth will be able to observe the Sabbath, not even the old Israelites. He fought them to stand still. He made sure he took the Sabbath from them. He made sure that they offended God to the extent that God swore by himself that they will never enter into his Sabbath, into his rest. In the book of Psalm 95, verse 11, God says, I have sworn in my wrath that these people will never enter into my rest. That's the Sabbath day. There is no punishment that can be greater than that. Next to that is death. It's a sentence to death, to rejection by God. God's not really begging people to be observing the Sabbath day. He wants you. He has the eagerness. But if you continue to reject it according to the will of the enemy, the arch enemy of the kingdom of God, which is the, the Satan himself, then you may have accepted another day instead of the day of rest, which is the Sabbath day. We thank God, same God the Father, that in his loving kindness, he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the son of God, born of the Holy Virgin Mary, son of the most high God, to come into this world for our redemption. And God appointed him with the power to carry grace through which he can set us free and truth that he may teach us. And that's why the Lord Jesus Christ said, whosoever the son sets free shall be free indeed. And in the pronouncement of his empowerment on earth. God said of the Lord Jesus Christ, he said, this is my only begotten son in whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. Hear him. I have given him the key that operates my heart. That's the meaning. I may have said one thing before. I may have decreed a thing before. I may have decided to deprive sinners of the right to some things before. But through the grace in the Lord Jesus Christ that I have given unto him, whatever he pleased to me upon, that I should do, that I will willingly do. And that's why when Jesus came, he said, come unto me, O ye that labors and that are heavenly laden, 
and I will give you rest. Remember in Psalm 95, verse 11, God has said he has sworn his rod that they will never enter into his rest. He said, these people shall never enter into my rest. He took the Sabbath from them. That blessed day, he took it from them. But the Lord Jesus Christ says, I will give you rest. I will give you rest. God says, they will never enter into my rest. The Lord Jesus Christ says, I will beg the Father. That is the implication. He has given me all powers and authority in heaven and on earth. Then I will give you rest. I will grant you the right to the Sabbath again the grace to be able to enter into God's rest again. That's why, brethren, I'm telling you this hour, have a change of mind for your own sake. Go back into the scriptures. Read about the Sabbath very well. This day that Satan is really, really embattling across the world, the Sabbath day. See what Satan and the people of the world has put on the Sabbath. They have turned the Sabbath to days of celebrations, funeral ceremonies, birthdays, housewarming, parties, all manner of things that is forbidden. Satan decisively made sure that he programmed them in the heart of mankind across the world to be heard on the Sabbath day the holy day. He knows the importance. As long as you are dancing to his tone, he will continue to have his ways in your life. Because when that happens, you lose the ministrations of the angels of heaven. The Holy Spirit of God will never come to you. The Sabbath is one of the marks that the Jews usually carry at that time. And that's why the Lord Jesus Christ proclaimed, he said, Salvation belongs to the Jews. But when Satan was able to penetrate their, their, their rank and files, he made them to offend God. They defiled the Sabbath. They defiled God's laws. They put God into wrath and anger against them. And God said, they will never enter into my rest. But the Lord Jesus Christ had come to present back to us the opportunity through his grace that we may enter into the rest of the Father. Because only by so shall our fastings be over, shall our sovereign be done away with. If you see the book of Isaiah chapter 58, we have God was talking about what he really wants instead of all these fastings of the churches, all these fastings of the old Jewish people. He said, you people are complaining that you fast, you did fast, you suffer yourself, you humble your souls, you put sack clothes on yourself, you are fasting day and night, and you are complaining that yet I do not answer your prayers. In verse 6, God said, are these the type of fastings that I ordained? That I ordained? Are these the type of fastings that I request from you? Some days that you set aside to load your foods, to reject, to refuse to eat. This is when you are doing your fasting. Is it not for fighting, for strife, and for wars? Am I interested in you not eating your food? Did I not create food that you will eat in the Garden of Eden? And I said to Adam and Eve, eat freely. He said, eat freely. There was no uh, 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 fasting law. He said, eat freely. But he said to Adam, I have worked six days, and on the seventh day, I take my rest. I blessed that day. So observe that day. There is no any other day that such special blessing is awaiting you. Observe that day. God knew what he had really stopped in the Sabbath day, special anointing. It carries that special anointing. 
it's right in the kingdom of God. The seventh day. So, from verse 6 of Isaiah chapter 58, God said, Are this not what I ordained? Are this not what I'm requesting you to do? To break asunder the yokes of bondage. To set the poor free. To clothe the naked. To share with the hungry of your fenison. He said, particularly, to observe my Sabbath day. That you do not do your will on my holy day. To be delightful in my Sabbath day. To call it a delight. To observe the Sabbath law. To keep your rest on that day. To not speak of your own things on that Sabbath day, but to be speaking of the things of the Lord only. He said, then you will see that your darkness will be like the noon period. You will blossom forth in bright light. I will heal you. I will bless you. I will lift you up. The blessings of God are for people who observe God's law, who observe particularly the Sabbath day observation and rules. I want to invite you to become a Christ fetish. A Christ fetish is a person that is following the faith of Christ, that has faith such as the Lord Jesus Christ himself carried. Prayer to the ascension of Christ, he said, by the time I would be returning, to I meet or find faith on earth? Jesus spoke of some people that were following him, calling him Lord, Lord. He said, but their heart is far away from me. To set the record straight, I'm not a member of the Seventh-day Adventist church. I'm not talking of any church denomination. I'm talking of Jesus Christ. What is central to your faith in Christ is to seek the, the kingdom of God and its righteousness. We are talking of two things here. The kingdom of God, that's the first one, then it's righteousness. Because there is no righteousness you can involve yourself in outside of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is the foundation upon which you build the edifice of righteousness. So he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And the Sabbath law is a kingdom law. It's part of the alpha blessings before the fall. God had said it in the book of Genesis. He said seven days he had. Six days of those seven he walked. On the seventh day he specially blessed it. And in it, he rested. Then he delivered that to the kingdom people for them to observe. And God says, I am God. I change not. This very important discussion will still continue as I'll be coming back with other series on this same topic, the Sabbath day of the Lord. A must for all believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Till then, I wish you a living faith in Christ, that you might enjoy all the promises of the gospel. Shalom. You have been watching Christ Faith Television Service. Thanks for being with us.